will start the recording and the stage is yours, Ivan. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks uh, for introduction of myself already and for Friesen, so I don't need to spend a lot of time about on, on that. Uh, yeah, I will talk about media fratricity. Uh, for defectoscopy of materials that are very problematic in, in for so to say st state of the art systems and we will show some first results some most recent results and just discuss some potential application scenarios so yeah recent was already introduced uh, i will maybe just add that uh, i personally work in the uh, optics branch and in oct and if i run spectroscopy groups and but today i will focus on, on oct so yeah, that's about recent again. I have this as a standard slides in my talks. Uh, the expertise fields, uh, all kinds of entity, I would say quality control assurance, construction development of system and sensors, and of course, uh, management of uh, technologies and project management. So uh, that was a good idea for me, I think, to include basic, basic principles of OCT as I saw in the poll. Um, so I will try to explain um, how OCT works very shortly, uh, just that you will understand the following parts and uh, that would maybe shape your ideas about OCT. So yeah, this is a basic uh, time domain OCT system. It's very good to start with time domain because it was uh, originally historical, uh, uh, the integration of OCT uh, and yeah, so it's based on, in this case, on Michelson interferometer, uh, and it exploits the, the low coherence interferometry to get uh, uh, subsurface information morphological sample. So we can think about the low coherence interferometry in the sense that we will see interference only in the case where arms of interferometer, so if we put a mirror here, when the arms of interferometer are nearly the same. So we will see observed interference only when we are in the, within the coherent lens of the light source. So if you take a quasi monochromatic light source, we will see the interference uh, along some meters or 100 even meters. But if you take a broadband light source, usually the interference will be absorbed within a coherent lens. So, and this is what is exploited uh, in OCT. So if we put something more complex instead of the mirror in one arm of interferometer, something partly reflective, part, partly transparent, uh, scattering maybe, uh, and start to scan one mirror of interferometer. So this is called time domain configuration. We will first observe uh, interference uh, when the pass length of reference arm equals to the this uh, pass length to the first inter interface. And then we will observe the second interface as uh, another peak. So this is a very simple structure. Yeah, and in this case, we record a, a, a profile, depth profile of the sample in this in certain point, if we focus on this point. So then we start to scan the sample and could record a line, uh, which uh, would give us already cross-section scan. So we, will, we would map a line and uh, reconstruct the depth profile. So, this is time domain OCT, uh, which is uh, still used in certain cases, uh, but I would say the most uh, standard or state of the art uh, is Fourier domain OCT because it's uh, it's uh, faster and it's more sensitive. Uh, and Fourier domain OCT can be realized in two different configurations. It's a spectral domain OCT uh, when a spectrometer is used. So here we have point detector and movable mirror. Uh, in this case, the mirror is fixed and we have a spectrometer to record spectral interferograms. So uh, this is one type of free domain OCT and another one is web source OCT when uh, the source is being tuned and single detector is used. So in uh, free domain OCT, our signal looks like a spectral uh, interferogram. So this is uh, interference, but recorded in a frequency domain. So the time domain frequency domain are related. Uh, and in the case of uh, Fourier domain OCT, our signal, which corresponds to just two reflectors, would look something like that. So we would have two different uh, frequencies uh, uh, superimposed on, on, on our spectral, uh, spectral bandwidth, or, yes, emission spectrum of the light source. So 
uh, which is linear in the weight number. So by taking the Fourier transform, an ACE can, can be reconstructed. So this is an example of a real measurement of ready ceramics, uh, ceramics when we can see the peaks which corresponds to the certain reflectors. So this is A scan reconstructed from Korea domain of CT. Then this is raw data for a B scan. So it's uh, the spectral interferon taken at different positions. And this is a B scan or cross-sectional scan, so-called, uh, obtained from this raw data. So, and then we can extend it further. We can ma map an area instead of one line and get a volumetric scan of the same, of the same. So the vo volume scan, or sometimes it's called three, the C scan, it's a stack of different B scans. Yes. Uh, so very important uh, is the OCT imaging parameters. So axial resolution is uh, is uh, decoupled from the from the lateral resolution. So it's not limited by diffraction, but as it was discussed before, it's defined by coherent lens of the source, and for Gaussian spectrum, it can be estimated uh, by this formula. So uh, what is important to note that it's directly proportional to the square of the central wavelengths and inversely to the to the boundaries. So therefore, if we move to longer wavelengths, for example, if we talk today about mid infrared, so the central wavelengths become long. Uh, so it means that we have to significantly extend bandwidth to to get the same uh, the same resolution as, for example, uh, near infrared analogs. Then imaging depths, uh, in case of Korea domain OCT is defined, as you can imagine, by the resolutional spectrometer, because the deeper layer is, the higher modulation uh, uh, on the spectra we have, uh, higher frequency of modulation, so it has to be resolved. So first of all, uh, first definition is the Nyquist uh, theorem, so that uh, we can resolve these frequencies. And then, of course, it's uh, so the Nyquist is not necessary the limitation factor because the spectrometer can have the spectral resolution lower. Then we have uh, probing depths, uh, which in the most cases for standard system is defined by the scattering very often. Uh, if we don't uh, consider scattering, usually it's uh, accepted to define it by the confocal gate of, of the beam. So. And lateral resolution is, of course, defined by the beam of the quality beam uh, and, um, and the focusing objects. So the lateral resolution of four CT system is defined by, by, by diffraction. So, yeah, to start, I would like to, to go a little bit to the history. As I started to work on the mid infrared OCT already five years ago. Uh, and uh, at this time, uh, it wasn't shown experimentally, but there were publications from Rongsu, uh, which uh, discussed the perspectives of mid infrared OCT for inspection of, uh, in this case, industrial ceramics. It was focused on industrial ceramics. So Rongsu performed simulations, uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulations, to, to verify that the longer wavelengths would allow to probe uh, significantly thicker. Uh, samples due to the more tolerance for insensitivity to scattering. And for quite some time, this uh, paper was uh, more or less just a theoretical. It was shown. I think uh, there were several measures performed, but only at the, up to wavelengths of 1.7. And I can explain why, uh, because the mid infrared range is uh, quite uh, problematic for, for, for more or less for development. So the Optics, um, optical elements, for example, detectors, cameras, and uh, light sources are either doesn't exist or have very uh, uh, so the specification are far away from the near infrared uh, counterparts. So just a good example is this camera, MCT camera that I had at the beginning, which is uh, has a rather poor resolution. Is 320 by 240 pixels, but the price is quite high. So, but with such a camera, you can still uh, build an OCT system. Yeah, so this was a challenge. Uh, yeah, this is just other simulations I, I performed to show the difference between uh, scattering of 1.3 micron wavelengths or 4, 4 micron wavelengths and the piece of ceramics. 
you can see that the probability to find the photon at the back interface of one millimeter C ceramics is significantly higher for longer wavelengths. Yeah, and this was was at that time. So the maximum uh, OCT at 1.7 was, was shown, where you can already see a little bit more than with 1.3. Yeah, then a little bit later, there was OCT at 2 micron compared with uh, state of the art OCT, uh, but for, in particular for, for, uh, for paintings objects. And here the enhancement was quite obvious. So this is the works uh, by which I, I have been inspired at this time. So they were possible to shade different colors and see quite deep in, inside. Yeah, and coming to the development of the first meter fret OCT system, uh, which were published in uh, 2018, the first enabling technology was uh, super continuum light sources. I would not go very deep into this topic. Uh, you can uh, refer to the review uh, paper published this year, where it was the sources were characterized and shown and discussed. Um, and I have to just mention that the sources are very broadband, uh, high power bright, uh, with uh, excellent beam quality of around with M square around 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, a little bit noisy, but from other uh, uh, performances uh, well fitting for construction of mid and fire toxicity. So uh, these are some characterization of the source, stability, beam profile, and uh, in our case, the source uh, from NKT photonics uh, uh, with around 500 milliwatts of average power, and I think around uh, 40 milliwatts in middle fret in the region of interest. So we use this peak. Uh, this source was used for the first system. So, and first demonstrations. Uh, so this is the first uh, system demonstration in the mid infrared uh, of OCT in mid infrared. So uh, the idea was uh, to use uh, pyroelectric detectors array. Uh, as I said, it was very challenging with the detection, and the goal was to do for the other main OCT as it's more sensitive uh, and. Uh, that was found that uh, pyroelectric arrays can work relatively good. Uh, these are low cost detectors, so the price of detectors is around 2000 uh, euro, and it has uh, 510 pixels, so a bit more than, than, I mean, almost twice more than the camera I showed before. Uh, yeah, and this is the schematic of the system. So the light source interferometer based, uh, be, be, uh, formed by the pellicle beam speed. Uh, Sample fixed on the XY stage, and this is OCT spectrometer. So, grating, uh, optics, and the pyroelectric is here. So, the chopper is needed to make pyroelectric detector work because it's sensitive to the changes. So, you have to introduce uh, the changes so it works in AC mode. So, this is the design of the spectrometer. The range has been that has been selected, and the very, very fast results. So, is at this time rather poor resolution, but we can. We could already prove the the enhanced penetration depths into in this case it's oil painting so they're just substrate. So and this is comparison to the system at 1.3 microns. So we can see the back interface. So for example, this paint uh, doesn't scatter a lot, so we can go through. This paint in the middle is I think cadmium red, which is quite scattering also for medium fret wavelengths, and this um, this paint can be probed well, and we also see scattering inside. Yeah, the first results you can find in this publication mentioned here. Yeah, this is just a volumetric scan of a bent car, also from the first iteration. Yeah, the nice thing about uh, uh, pyroelectric is its uh, spectral uh, responsivity. So you just need to make it black uh, in the very broad range, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's not a, as big problem as for photonic detectors to work. Uh, so it works uh, almost in the whole middle thread and, and further and with uh, the highest at around 4 micron in which we are very interested in. So a, a drawback is of course that the number of pixels is not very high, so the increase of the, of the spectral bandwidth was not really uh, feasible or there were not a lot of degrees of freedom here uh, to increase axial resolution. 
but yeah, as I said, it was already very well, a very good proof of principle, which I think uh, lateral resolution was around 35, axial also around 35 microns, and such samples like uh, ceramic, uh, so industrial ceramics can be probed very well. Uh, so this is comparison of this sample with uh, uh, commercial system at 1.3, where there are no layers visible. And this is actually the sample which uh, Rongsu has used for, for his uh, theoretical uh, work. And yeah, something more complex, such a uh, volumetric scan of the such ceramic sandwiches with embossed laser pattern can be measured, and some defect uh, defects can be uh, analyzed and, uh, and evaluated. Yeah, also the few measurements just uh, uh, for tablet coatings were done uh, here is the polymer samples, which are also often very scattering. So this is uh, unfast images at different taken depths where we can see from the band card from the other side, from the, this metal band card chip region. So we can see the chip inside some antennas and, 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 and some other details. And these are already more recent results. Uh, so the big field is additive ceramics manufacturing, where uh, uh, mid infrared OCT gives uh, significantly more information than, for example, state of the art OCT systems. And this is also from additive ceramics manufacturing. I will focus a little bit more later on this. Yeah, so the next step was uh, the dual band operation. So when the it was found that the parasitic interference, uh, uh, there is a parasitic interference from two micron region. So it's a second deflection order for two microns. It was in the four micron region. And instead of like uh, uh, removing it, this parasitic interference, it was amplified by using uh, the by replacing some optics and, and optimization of the system. And this allowed to do with the same system. Uh, uh, measurement in the two different ranges, two micron and the four micron center wave lengths. Uh, so if no spectral filters would be inserted, this is tablet coating, you can get the two scans at once, but uh, then they were separated just by objects, not numerically. And this was, was very nice because um, we could more or less verify the predictions of Rong Su in terms of probing depths, at different wavelengths, and yeah. So this was also possible to combine the same measurement, like to perform two scans and overlay them. So two micron regions get a, a bit better resolution, while four micro regions allow to, to see it deeper inside. So this was uh, uh, experimental confirmation of the predictions. And yeah, uh, something beyond uh, just standard industrial ceramics, for example, here is an investigation of uh, Austrian pottery from Munden. Uh, where we could see quite deep inside uh, by around maybe 500 microns and can distinguish some layers. So this black layer visible here is, uh, is a real layer uh, due to some production stage. Uh, this is the glaze. So this is colored part, uh, which is less scattering and yeah, and taken different positions. This is also st some structural feature, uh, which is a little bit less pronounced and, and the glaze is very well visible and scattering within the glaze. Uh, then uh, the two micron system was also like the two micron modality of the system was uh, used for uh, for imaging of uh, paintings, mock-ups. Uh, and here it was, it's also showed some, uh, some success in terms of uh, di distinguish different layers, different types of paints as they have different scattering properties. And it was possible to, to, to image quite complex structures. So the one B scan is shown here, and this is for the metric scan. A little bit further. So this is the most recent uh, uh, implementation of medium infrared OCT, which is now is in use. Uh, and as I said before, it was a little bit problematic to increase the bandwidth significantly uh, to get a better axial resolution here as this problem is solved. Uh, so it's completely different spectrometer. If this part is relatively similar, so the spectrometer is different, it's based on photonic radio detector, so no thermal detection, so quite sensitive photonic detector, but single point detector. 
And then we have a spectrometer with 4F system that conjugates the grating and galvanic scanner plane. So that means that the fields in these planes are the same. So in the galvanic scanner plane, we have different wavelengths uh, falling under different angle in end crossing at in this plane. So therefore, by rotating the galvanic scanner, we can select the wavelengths which is being probed or sensed at this time. So therefore, we record the spectral interferograms in time. It's very similar to swept source. Uh, OCT, but it's uh, a little bit inverted, it's swept detector OCT, so to say. And uh, yeah, so this allows to increase the bandwidth and have quite a lot of sampling points and quite good resolution. So this bandwidth from around 3.1 to 4.2 was covered, which uh, allowed to get the axial resolution of OCT system below eight microns. So this is example how the system looks, uh, how the signal looks like, and I have to mention this is very, this is really schematic. But uh, recently, the system has been miniaturized. Uh, so the measurement head, which uh, combines the interferometer, focusing the optics, and reference arm, was placed on the onto such a plate with a size of around 12 by 16 centimeter, and it's an enclosed box uh, connected uh, with the source by the by infrared optical fiber and with this is the, the, the detection part also by another infrared optical fiber. So this is something already miniature which can be integrated or, or, or used in the more, so to say, field conditions. Yeah, and uh, this system was used primarily for, for ceramics, uh, for defectoscopy of ceramics. So these are very first results and the technical details on this uh, system you can find in this publication from last year. So yeah, this is just uh, one bright example. It's an uh, aluminum ceramics plate, uh, rather thick, but with um, surface, some surface defects due to the contamination of the surface during sintering. So the, it was partly overheated uh, and there is, uh, so with OCT in the cross-section scans, these uh, this, uh, defects can be imaged and uh, the profile of the defects can be analyzed, how deep they go, what is the, what is the shape? Uh, and you can see that there is a, a bright uh, surroundings, uh, which is actually a variation of the porosity. So uh, in this case, OCT can give some uh, extra information about material, not only structural, morphological, but uh, also information about porosity localization. So in this image, the, the OCT signal was integrated from the surface to certain uh, range uh, below the surface and we can see kind of a porosity map uh, where we see that the certain parts have like increased porosity and certain uh, a lower porosity this is uh, relative not uh, absolute but absolute uh, must be possible with uh, proper cultivation yeah uh, yeah this is again more about the porosity measurements so such a more complex uh, complex uh, shaped uh, structured uh, sample uh, in two in two forms so this is synthroid uh, ceramic plate and this is uh, green part so green part is the polymer with ceramics uh, particles inside and it's designed in such a way that the porosity is uh, changed stepwise and the step is also varying size so this is this kind of the green part here we start to see already layers uh, printing layers for for certain uh, porosity uh, porosity uh, uh, levels uh, uh, to mention the porosity levels are quite high here it's around uh, so the for the low porosity is 10 percent and the high porosity is 31 percent which is far away from what was at the beginning so at the beginning this the ceramics plates with maybe five percent three percent were measured yeah and uh, here we can apply the same method that was applied before and get the porosity profile uh, of the sample. Uh, so in, uh, in addition to the structure information like the surface information and the layers visibility, we can analyze the porosity as well as for sintered part. So for example, for sintered part, uh, there is no already surface variation in height. So it becomes very smooth after heating and removing the polymer, uh, but the porosity stays, stays there as it was designed. Yeah, this is uh, uh, a very uh, bright example uh, 
for to compare mid infrared OCT with standard solution and also to see what can be seen. So this is a green part. So polymer and, and ceramics again, uh, with uh, some structure in the middle, uh, just to have uh, to, to have the structural information, volumetric information. And we can perform the volumetric scan. I think it's one by one centimeter. And we can already from the unfast image of the top surface, we can see the cracks. There are some cracks, scratches. Uh, there is a bubble here on surface bubble because the sample is uh, rather uh, rather big in the lateral dimension. Uh, sometimes error cannot go out due to printing. But we can also see the bubbles uh, inside because there are such bubbles also uh, below the surface. This is uh, an unfast of the fourth level. So we can see the darker regions. So it's also some variations of the material properties at these steps. Um, the cracks are well visible. And yeah, we can see that the surround structure is a little bit darker region. Uh, it can be probably due to the uh, variation of, of exposure time uh, due to the structure. This is surface of the structure, and uh, here is interested that uh, we don't see the three last squares because they are getting somehow closed earlier than the bigger ones. Uh, the sharpness of the edges can be also assessed, and the these kinds are very uh, very nice. Is um, we can see quite a lot of uh, printing layers from this uh, 3D printer, uh, as well as some artifacts or so some kind of bubbles or variation the layer quality, probably delamination and the cracks here. This is a crack. So this is a structure, this kind of the structure. Also, this is the, the bubble on, on the top surface. Yeah, and the thickness is around 300, so 650 microns of this other plate. This is to be mentioned. And this is the comparison to the, this is scan come, uh, uh, obtained with the commercial system at 1.3 microns. So where we can see, you know, in the layer and just the multiple scattering pattern. So then the, these are the scans of Sintered part, which corresponds to this, uh, to this green part. So uh, pure ceramics part can be also uh, investigated. Yeah, the big uh, the big interest is uh, is uh, multi component materials or the, uh, like when the sample is formed by different uh, by different uh, materials is in this case it's exemplified for two components interred ceramic part so where uh, the star pattern I think is formed by by zirconia yeah and uh, surroundings is uh, alumina uh, ceramics and, and these two materials they have different porosity because they should be centered normally at different temperatures. Uh, but yeah, the here is center is, uh, is, is one temperature, therefore one is more porous than another. And this can be clearly seen from the porosity mapping. And uh, it has such a wavy shape due to the same uh, reason, different centering temperatures. So the uh, different materials, they would have a different shrinkage uh when they heat it and therefore we can also access this this uh, this shape and the porosity and the layers as well which is uh, of interest of course for material research in this case yeah so this is the very sum up of the mini fred oct of the potentials on what we can see what are, can be potentially the materials yeah this is what i would like to end up with and if you have any questions or afterwards you can of course contact me yeah or my colleagues thanks a lot Ivan <laughs>